Red Widow? No way. Really? It lunged right at me. Eli Wild One and I decided to venture in South Florida looking for the rare Red Widow. We met up with the local expert in Red Widows, Mikey Green from Cool Critters YouTube. It wasn't long before we found our first critter. This right here is one of the most unique species of spiders that you could find out here in Florida. This is the green lynx spider. Now not all individuals of the species I've seen are actually green. I've seen a couple like mottled brown or yellowish colored ones, but this one right here is just a beautiful shade of lime green. Let's take a look at this. And these can be a little quick, but I'm gonna try and make a capture on this beautiful spider. Did it drop? Oh no, it's right there. The camouflage is so insane. Oh, you got him. There we go. Oh, check this out. This is actually my first time ever handling a green lynx spider, so I'm very happy about this. This species has some of the best camouflage of any spider, and that is actually what they use to their advantage to hunt for their prey. These don't really set up an elaborate web. Instead, they sit waiting on the surfaces of leaves where their coloration makes them blend in almost perfectly and wait for something like a moth, a fly, maybe even a beetle to land near their perching spot. Those very long hairs that you see on those legs help them ensnare their prey. Lynx spiders have some of the hairiest and most spiny legs of any spiders. And this green lynx spider is definitely the largest of our lynx spiders here in Florida, so you can really see that distinctive trait. This right here is a rosemary grasshopper. This species is not only endemic to the state of Florida, but also endemic to living only on this species of plant right here. This is Florida rosemary, which can only be found in scrub and sand hill habitats in the southeastern United States. This species cannot be found anywhere else but scrub areas in Florida, which is crazy. And this, you can see the beautiful camouflage it has, helps them blend in perfectly with this bark of the Florida rosemary tree. So I'm just gonna let this beautiful grasshopper go back out into the environment. Notice a lot of times the same habitats that we find Florida rosemary grasshoppers, the same habitat where we find red widow spiders. We continued our search when Eli suddenly shouted, Red Widow? No way. Really? This is the biggest red I've ever seen. First red and it's the biggest. There, here she comes. All right, she's coming out, Luke. She's coming out. Got a good shot? <gasps> wow. Dude, that thing's massive. Oh my gosh. That's literally gorgeous. It's going to be a tough capture. All right, we'll give you some space so you can get it done. It is tense. <laughs> I'm nervous. Story I'm actually really nervous. Second deadliest spider in the state. She lunged at me. She did? Yep. So we're not recording this one. I am definitely. There we go. Wonderful Dude, capture. That was oh my fun. gosh, that was heart racing. Oh that that was, was heart racing. So this right here is the beautiful red widow spider, but the ecology of the red widow is very unique. Unlike the other widow spiders, these are never found in urban areas. These prefer scrub, pineland habitat, just like this, especially with these two plant species, the saw palmetto and the scrub palmetto. That's almost exclusively what they'll be found in. The range of the red widow is only exclusively in Florida. So these are a Florida endemic threatened species. Although they're not listed as a threatened species because of their very small range, they need conservation and protection. So these red widows are out here in these Florida scrub environments, mostly eating beetles. Now these are completely insectivorous. They actually set their webs out in palm fronds that are in open fly zones of insects, mostly beetles, but also occasionally grasshoppers and crickets. 
these will mostly be focusing on eating scrub endemic beetle species, like those palmetto taurus beetles, as well as a few species of scarab beetle and click beetles. So how do you identify a red widow? Well, it's actually pretty easy. There's the black widow, brown widow, and the red one. The black one is of course black, the brown is brown, and the red is red. So the reds and the blacks both have black epistosomas, which is the booty of the widow. They have these red little dots on the back with yellow encasing the red. Whereas black widows actually have that hourglass, which is kind of famous of the black widow spider. You won't actually see the hourglass on the black widow though, because it is on the bottom of the epistosoma. Unless you're actually actively looking for it, you will not see it. What I do notice about the red though is it actually looks a bit orange like the body and the legs whereas the the actual epistosoma is really really red. So this red widow spider right here has an LD50 or a median lethal dose of venom of 2.2 milligrams of venom per kilograms of body weight of whatever animal that this spider is biting. That means that 2.2 milligrams of this venom per whatever body weight is what would result in the death of an animal that this is biting. That amount is actually more toxic than that of the dusky pygmy rattlesnake, which is a highly toxic snake species that can be found in this kind of habitat. And it is actually the same exact amount, that LD50 is the same exact number as that of the Western diamondback rattlesnake. So it is just crazy to think. This neurotoxic venom that they have is so potent that this beautiful red widow spider walks around as a living advertisement of just how potentially deadly it is. Thank you guys for watching this episode of 12 Boys where we feature this beautiful Red Widow. We'll see you guys on the next adventure. Don't forget to get out and, and get, get wild. wild. Let's make sure this absolutely gorgeous spider gets right back to her web. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. She should recognize this palm tree. There she goes. It's the one that she made her beautiful web on. Gorgeous spider.